Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody, wherever you are. This is my name is Bumi, and this text with tech with Bumi. I welcome you all to this live section. Today will be we have a guest in our midst. Her name is Sherifa Akin Bumi. Did I pronounce it well? Akiwomi, you try. Akiwomi, Aki, Aki sorry, I'm not used to the song. Yeah. It's not that song yeah. that I'm used to. So I'm so sorry that we are late. I can see some people, some of us are here, and I'm so sorry we are late. So now I, I'm going to, I'm going to bring Mrs. Sherifat on board to give us a brief introduction about herself, and we'll start. Thank you. Great, thank you, Bumi, for having me. And yes, my name is Sherifa Takiwami. I'm a cybersecurity professional. Uh, I have almost um, over 10 years experience working in this field. I had my master's in information security management and then computer science and IT was my first degree. Um, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I have three lovely children and I'm a wife as well. So I don't know. Does that cover my introduction for me? Or? Yeah, just a bit about yourself, your IG, oh, okay. numbers, your everything about you, just a brief one, right? Okay. So in terms of social media activity, I'm mostly active on LinkedIn. Uh, just put my name on it, Cherry Fat Akiwami. And I share a lot of content relating to cybersecurity there. So you can find me there on the other IG uh, social media platform, not very active and usually is a very close circle as well. I really don't uh, share much. But if you want to really find out more, just uh, check me out on LinkedIn. That's where I really post stuff. Uh, about myself, um, I currently live in Canada, in Alberta, Calgary, Alberta. Uh, but I left Nigeria last year, uh, so all my life I've been in Nigeria, uh, but I moved here just personal reasons, and yeah, I'm liking it here as well. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. It's really lovely. So you finally, you. did you cut your hair? Yes, my hair is cut, but well, you can't see it yet because I wear a scarf every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to have you here. Mm, and if you, you don't know, Sherry, myself and Sherry, we've been friends for like, as we went to the school, secondary school. So second, yes. secondary we school. We got to College, Badori. Badori, yeah. And she's a guru. If you, if you want to grab her, grab her. She graduated with a first class. <laughs> oh, God. She got in the first class and went to do her master's immediately and grabbed and graduated, finished with a first class too. Eh? With the distinction, yes, it's I had the distinction. distinction. Wow. <laughs> yes, but me and I went to the same secondary school, and you know, if you and it was a boarding school, so you know, being in a secondary school with someone is everyone we are like family because we used to sleep yeah. and wake up in Together. the same hostel yeah so i consider all my secondary school mates brothers and, and i used to be and i used consider. to be that very quiet girl ah very very quiet very quiet very quiet of course i remember so good 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 okay, to have now, you have me yeah, here thank mm -hmm. you so much so now what is cyber security if i may ask so okay great so hmm, this is my passion this is where i live for i love cyber security and which was why i was when i was going for my master's degree back in 2007 i looked at all the courses so i had this mindset let me share something quickly about about me uh when i was younger i actually thought i'll be a policewoman you know <gasps> i just want to catch the bad guys yes <laughs> when i was very younger so i thought oh i'm gonna be a policewoman so when I got to the university and studied computer science, I, I liked it, of course, computing and, and all of that. I wanted engineering, but the school I went to didn't have uh, engineering at that time. I don't know if they do now. So I went for computer science. And when I finished, I looked for a course that would help me combine that passion for catching the bad guys with my skills in computer science. And that's why I went for information security. And information security now turns cybersecurity. So what is cybersecurity? 
Cybersecurity is ensuring that your system resources information is secured. Everything you do online is secured. And it's such an important aspect today. Because as you see, a lot of things have gone digital. We work digitally. Thanks to COVID, a lot of businesses had to also introduce digital. Those that didn't want to initially had to introduce digital to their, to their work and to their business. And once you are digital, the next thing after that is to is security of your information. It's just like buying a restaurant and, you know, overnight when you close your shop, nobody locks the gates, nobody, there's no security. You have to put some kind of security, otherwise bad, bad guys are going to take over, which is why cyber security is so important. It's important in every aspect, our personal lives, our businesses, our, our work. So far you exist online, you have to consider cybersecurity in everything you do. So basically, to so your question was cybersecurity, security of your resources, your online, your system, your information, your data, everything. That's in a nutshell what cybersecurity is. It's quite pregnant, but you know, I'll leave it at that high level um, to, to just explain what cybersecurity is. Okay. Oh. Sorry, I need to quickly do something. Continue. Okay. All right, great. So I think the topic we are talking about today is um, cybersecurity in businesses, small businesses. Yeah, in businesses. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people be wondering why, 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 why do I need to? What is this cybersecurity? Why? So. I'm going to focus on trying to break it down. You know, I'm, I'm going to try and break it down to what you will understand and why it's so important. So there's this myth about cybersecurity or cyber criminals only concerned about the big guys. So they go after uh, uh, companies where they can make money. But that's not the case. Very, very There was a report from very soon, uh, I think 2019 report, and in that report, 49% of cyber attacks were actually targeted at small businesses. And why do they go after small businesses? Uh, it's because uh, they believe that they are soft targets. They would not invest a lot in security. And as a result, they go after them. Okay. Um, so you do not want to be in that um, in that cycle. You don't want um, to, to be cut off in any cyber security uh, or, or you losing funds. But why exactly do you need cyber security? I'll give you, I'll tell a story of a friend. Um, so uh, is a colleague in cyber security, his wife is a photographer. He, he does, uh, she does photography, she covers weddings, she, you know, she does a lot of work in, in heart. She takes pictures, covers your events and things like that. And then um, she went to a wedding, covered the wedding, took the pictures, you know, took it home to edit so that she could, you know, send it back to a customer who had their wedding in one time life event. Um, and hoping that the photographer has been able to capture those memories so that he can have it for years. And then she unfortunately got a link at about the same time when she had finished editing the pictures and she saved it. And then she, oh, this link, and then she clicked on the link to look at it. You know, it was something about the free coupon to, to get something. And then she clicked on it, and that was the end. She just noticed that oh, all her files were looking strange. She didn't recognize the pictures you know, she had recently worked on. Not only the pictures of the wedding she recently covered, but a lot of other pictures. Suddenly, she just couldn't assist them. And she was like, oh, anyway, my husband, her, her husband, who is my friend, is the IT guru. She worked, you know, majestically to him. I said, hey, come, I'm having problems. I can't seem to look at all of the pictures I just edited and all of that. And the guy looked at it and immediately recognized what has happened. What happened? All the pictures are being encrypted and it's a kind of cyber crime called ransomware. So talk sorry, to, sorry to cut it. Sorry to cut it. Yeah. Do you know something like that happened to me? Like the photographer that did our introduction 
picture. I gave him my picture. He, he, up to today, he didn't give us, we don't have introduction pictures because of that. He just told me, I'm sorry, the system crashed and I lost all your pictures. And she collect, he collected our money. So, Can you they, yeah, that's Nigeria for so, you. So, you see, that is a so, real example of oh. how cybersecurity can affect a business. In this case, because it's Nigeria, you had already paid. In other places, that photographer, they will definitely refund your money because they didn't provide the services. Yeah. And which means he's losing money from his business because he made effort, he took his camera, he took manpower to go cover your events and couldn't produce the picture. So I was going to explain what happened for those who were... Sorry, before you continue, sorry, so people are yeah. giving us money already. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us the super chat. Thank you, Amotayo, for giving us the super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great. So what, what is ransomware, uh, which is what happened? So imagine kidnapping when they kidnap someone, which unfortunately is common now um, in Nigeria, sadly, and then they ask your family members to pay money. That is exactly what happened to that lady. And maybe in your case, but the photographer didn't just understand what happened. And then they, 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 they took the pictures, they encrypted it, because that thing she downloaded that she clicked on was actually the tool to encrypt the files. So he locked up all her files in a way that she cannot access it. And then the hacker had the key to decrypt the, the, the files. And then they sent a message to her, your files have been encrypted. You have to pay money in Bitcoins to get your files back. And the husband was like, even the, the husband is a world, is even an ethical hacker himself very good but in this case unfortunately the encryption if you don't have the key you don't have the key it's a case of using security because encryption is part of security when you want to communicate your information securely without someone having access to it you encrypt it to keep it securely but in this case they've twisted it they've now used it to encrypt our files using it in a cyber attack <sighs> anyways that was what happened to, to, to them. They had to refund the money for the pictures because there was no way they could you know, pay the amount of money that was being requested for, which is more than the amount they, 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 they charged to, to cover the wedding. So they, you know, they, they, they made a decision to accept the risk and pay back the customer rather than pay the hackers. Well, you know, you don't want to be in that situation. And there are many things in which you can do. So that's just a true life story of what can happen to, to your business if you don't begin to take cybersecurity seriously. Um, financial loss, you lose money. So that's one impact. Another thing is privacy. So abroad and more advanced country, they take privacy very seriously. If you conduct your business online, like in the UK, there's GDPR is a regulation for companies or anybody who access personal information, you are liable to do certain things to do information. You have to keep it secure. So if you are found wanting in that area, they find that you know you you that you are mismanaging people's information, they can actually find you, which you need to penalties of or, or, or fines as well. You know, so um, that that's that's another reason why you need to take uh, cybersecurity important. You also need to consider your future long term of your of your business. So you do everything online now. If you don't have a proper cybersecurity strategy in place, you can lose everything, and then that's the end of the business. Imagine you saving your customer database, your information of how you operate and things like that on the system. And something happens and everything goes, that can actually kill your business. If it's a small business, you're looking to grow, not to die. So, you know, that's, uh, that, in a nutshell, that's a reason why we should, we, should, we, should, we should take cybersecurity seriously. And then I'll go into what you can do. So I know a lot of people, they now understand why cybersecurity is important to them. We can talk about, what exactly can you do? As a small business owner, you are not the big guys, you know, the big banks or the big companies that have all of the resources that can afford to hire experts. And there are loads of fantastic cybersecurity experts in Nigeria. 
doing amazingly well, highly skilled and technical men and women. But you know, as small businesses, you may not be able to afford them, but what are the things you can do? So Bumi, I'll go right into that, or do you wanna have a short yeah. interlude? Um, yeah, you can continue, but before you continue, if you have any questions, you can just put behind. So after the after everything, our guest to answer. But before before you continue, how is it how can it really affect the small businesses? Like you know, because of the COVID nineteen, a lot of people are going digital, and yeah. there are some hackers there. How can we secure our businesses yeah. with cyber exactly. security? So that's where we are going now. How? What can you do as a small okay. business owner to secure, so to protect your business, to protect yourself? Uh, either if you're working alone or you have employees, you have to be aware. So I'll take it from the angle of training your employees, right? If you have two or three, four, five employees, you need to train them. Let them know what cybersecurity is. And there are lots of free materials online in which you can use. You don't need to pay for that. You can just, you know, Google things to do for cybersecurity. But I'll touch on specific things in which you can train your employees or even you can learn about. The first one is social engineering. What is social engineering? Social engineering takes a lot of fun. So it could be a simple hanging out by yourself at a bar or anywhere, and then someone comes to you and asking interesting questions, trying to get to know you, where do you live, where do you work, what time do you close from work? This, this is the most simple form of social engineering, it's called the physical social engineering. But there's also phishing. Phishing is an example of when you get an email asking you to do certain things, asking you to click on this link, uh, to update some personal information is very, very common nowadays. Almost all cyber attacks actually initiate, you know, they start from a phishing attempt because a lot of times they need you to act. They need you to do something they, before they can, you know, execute the attack. And they use phishing a lot. The other version of phishing is smishing. So there's this very popular one I used to get while in Nigeria about um, your BVN has been blocked. I know a lot of people would have gotten such a such such SMS that your BVN has been blocked, do this, do that to, to, to activate your account. That is an example of smishing because the person contacting you is pretending to be your bank or pretending to be someone who they are not just so that they can have access to your money, so that they can have access to your personal information, which will give them access to your money. Because most attacks in Nigeria are aiming for something, finance, they are aiming for money. We have other attacks in other countries that are for different reasons. Some are fighting the government, some are against one policy or the other. But about 98% of attacks in Nigeria is after the money. So when you get that kind of SMS, do your employees know what to do? Do they know that, are they able to recognize that this is a fake SMS or a fake email and they shouldn't respond? They shouldn't divulge any of their personal information. When your employees, if they have mailboxes, do they know that when they receive mails from people or from an unknown source, they don't have to respond to it. They don't have to divulge information. They don't even have to click click on it or attend to it. Do they know? You know, so there are many, many things that you need to, uh, uh, you know, you need to train your employees about. And in this fishing, I remember an incident that happened just before I left Nigeria at the big, at the middle of COVID, that's about, July? about this time last, last year. So my husband, <laughs> we just woke up and then he got an email. And in the email, what was it? It was like a mail from someone in his office. He's in finance, he's in an account. He was the CFO of his organization. And someone from his office said, please send this money to this account, blah, 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 blah. And they put it in, in that email. And he looked at the email. Uh, this person hardly communicates this kind of thing mm -hmm. to anyone. Then exactly. Secondly, 
we don't even treat transactions on email like this, which is another point I'm going to go to later. That the mail looks suspicious. So, you know, rather than treating that email immediately, he called the person up. And the person said, no, I never sent this email. So what has happened? That it's person's email, email was compromised. Was yes, that person's email was compromised. They got access to the person's email, pretended to be that person, and then sent the email to the husband and put their account number away. And trust me, this has happened successfully in other places. It's called CEO fraud or CFO fraud, where people try to pretend to make your finance and they really target finance people. They know that these are the people in charge of the money. And if they are not aware, that is how that money would, you know, they would have lost the money. So, you know, basic training for your employee on social engineering is key. Password management is key to, to train your employees on. Some people's password, you'll be shocked. Password is password. You do your business on social media, but your password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're going to get hacked mm -hmm. and they will take over your account and just use it. And a lot of businesses, I know many businesses you know, that people do on social media. Let me give you one example that happened to me. Back home in Nigeria, I used mm -hmm. to put my ATM card inside my wallet. That's the reason why I don't have a wallet up to today. Do you know what happened? I went to a fast food, I think it's a sensation, to go have my lunch during, during work hours, my break time. Then... I don't know what happened because I, a customer came to my office then and he said, let's go for lunch. Then I went for lunch and I forgot my wallet. Hmm. When I left my wallet, what's the next thing they should do? They should return back. They should call me back, right? And yeah. tell me. And give, and your wallet and give back me back you. my wallet. Do you know what happened? They went on in the morning because I think it was on a weekend. I did not even know. It was my mom's house elf that said, Auntie Bumi, your wallet is not in your room. I was like, my wallet? I checked my bag. I said, I left it in the office. When I got to the morning, when I got to the office in the morning, you know, I woke up seven o'clock in the morning. Before I got to my office, seven thirty or eight o'clock, I was just hearing a lot. Bam, bam, bam. 20, I'm sure your I'm sure your pin was very simple. My pin was simple then. And and then, before I got to the office, the person withdrew. 100,000 Naira. And Can I was like, imagine. oh my God. I started chasing the person. They, though, by the time I got there, they said they arrested those people. But the good thing is that Susan Station paid back my money. Good. Because it was their fault. That's, 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 that's good. But yeah, really, Bumi, it's not their fault. Though. You're the one that forgot your wallet. And you're the one that used simple <laughs> things. So, it's only like that they did that. I have to let me to decide that wallet. It only left 20, 20 naira inside. 20 naira. <laughs> oh, everything. God. Oh, no. So, you see the importance of having um, password management, PIN password. You cannot use 1234. You cannot use your date of birth. You cannot use your children's date of birth. You cannot use their name, the name of your dog or your pet, your favorite place or something as your password. Your employ employees, they need to understand that, that to make it more difficult, your password has to be complicated. And these things are easy to do. You don't have to use a password that you'll be forced to write down every time. I'll give an example of a very good password. So for me, here, my favorite season is summer. My password could be my favorite season is summer. M capital S capital I capital. Then I can just add seven, eight, nine, ten. The most important thing is that your password is long. Add to guess, which means that somebody cannot think through it and say, "Oh, what's Sharifa's name? Sharifa's name is this." Let me try a password. Let me ask Sharifa one, two, three, and they'll just get my password. No, you can't use that as your password. Otherwise, they'll take over your account. Because that password, that PIN, is what gives access. It's the authentication that gives you access to that resource. So you need it to be secure, to be hard to guess. So it's another area in which you can uh, educate your employees on. You're giving them access to your social media account. You're giving them access to your system. Their password has to be, has to be complex. They have to have that password. And they must know that they can't share it. Password is known. It's like your toothbrush. You know, you can't share your toothbrush. Don't share your password, you know. Same also goes for your Wi-Fi. So a lot of us use Wi-Fi at home. How easy is your Wi-Fi 
how easy is it to guess your Wi-Fi password? Someone that can connect to your Wi-Fi is on the same network as you. And as a result, they can sniff everything happening on your network. So these are some of the password. Password to your media emails, password to social media accounts, password to your systems, password to your Wi-Fi and other devices you pin to your, to your ATM card, you know, and things like that. It has to be complex. Okay. Um, another thing is if you give your employees uh, devices to work with, you have to make sure that they do not just go and connect to any free Wi-Fi. I'll give an example. You go to the airport or cafe and then connect to Wi-Fi. Another story here. So there was a guy who narrated that um, he was he's a converted hacker. He was a hacker before. I was at a conference and he was sharing his story. And part of what they used to do is they would target all these high hotel, high end hotels, expensive hotels that you know all the rich people, only rich people can afford. They would gather money, him and his fellow hackers, and go and book a room there. And what would they do? They would connect to the hotel's Wi Fi. Because they are in that hotel, connected to the Wi Fi, with their security tools, they can actually sniff the network. So you are in the hotel as well, you're a guest, you've logged in, you've got Wi Fi, you connect without using your BVN. Guess, uh, yeah, I say your BVN, your VPN, the virtual private network. Someone in the next room can actually see the transaction. You cannot be in the hotel and be logging onto your banking information without big VPN. Because if that hotel do not put enough tunnel encryption, or I don't want to get too technical, like to secure the network traffic, someone can be in that hotel and sniff all the traffic, everything you are doing, they can sniff it and get the data from it. And then they can pretend to be you and log in. So it's important to let them know that your employees, they can't just go to any cafe or any public place, connect to free Wi-Fi and continue to do their work. Because if there's a hacker on that network, with their tools, they can actually sniff out of this person. So that is that about training your employees. Social media, uh, social engineering, password management, and management of their devices. So that's your number one thing that you can focus on. If you do not take anything away from our session, train your employees. That's very key. Another thing you can do is, as a small business, we know resources are limited. You can use security solutions. There are many affordable security solutions available. With you. The moment you are going digital, you have a website, you are online, you're doing this, your computer, you can leverage on cheap security, affordable security solution. And a lot of the giant uh, tech industries actually provide this. For instance, if you are hosting your website on GoDaddy or any other platform, you can actually purchase security solutions with that. And that will help you ensure your e-commerce site is secured. You have a uh, personal firewall, you have antivirus, and you know all of these security solutions actually help. And also patch your system. You need to patch your system and move out. A lot of people, when they see updates, that is when to skip it, either on your phone or on your mobile device. That's when to skip it. You are doing yourself if you do not patch your system because the manufacturer of those systems, of the mobile devices, they have noticed a loophole, a vulnerability, and they have now released the patch. That is why they're asking you to patch your system. So it's extremely important to always patch your system. So use security solution, patch your system, use VPN when you can. They are affordable VPNs too, and that helps you ensure secure connection with uh, while you're working. The third one is back up your data. This is the second most important thing I'm going to talk about. The first one was the train your employees. If you do not take any other thing away apart from training your employees, back up your data. And what, I, what do I mean by back up your data? You're working on your system, you're doing your stuff. I have another copy of your information somewhere. In fact, have, you, okay, have another it. copy. Yeah, you can have it in cloud. Oh, you know, yeah, Google I Drive. Cloud. Google, yeah, Google, 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 Google is very Google good. Drive, very good, and they give 15 gig free. So you have a Gmail account, back it up there, and it will be there. Google is big. You know, but very important that you always back up your system. When you finish doing it, just back it up to the cloud. And apart from the cloud, get a physical hard drive or something 
also back it up. So you have two copies, one in the cloud, if the cloud ever collapses, and then another one that you physically have in which you can use quickly when you need it. And make it very periodic. Just put a schedule in place. Once a month, I want to back up my system, my information, back it, all your customer information, your back it up and keep. You know, that may save you if anything happens. Then the fourth thing I want to talk about is insider threats. So, you know, yeah, you have employees, you work with employees, you trust them, you employ them. Anything can go happen at any time. It could be knowingly, intentionally, or unintentionally. So I'll, I'll try to explain this. If you have if one employee who has access to your customer data, uh, maybe collecting credit card information for customer relating customer. And it's the same employee that has, has access to your bank account finance that can make orders that can do this. You have created uh, a toxic combination of assets. Basically, you've created a situation where single-handedly that employee, if I was the one, has access to your entire business. And as a result, anything can happen from there. What do you do? You should include segregation of assets in your business. And it should be done in a way that one employee cannot single-handedly complete a transaction from start to finish. So this employee, I know with limited resources, it may be difficult, but there are certain ways in which you can do things. This employee's work is, oh, managing the social media account and selling and marketing. That's fine. It's different from the employee that can go to the bank and make sure they do your transaction. It's different from, you know, I know it may not be easy to say, ah, I'm very small. How much am I making that we now have to start having different employees? But you don't, you, you may be the second employee to say, okay, in charge of money, I'll be the one to, 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 to manage it. Why you do this? But never ever give your employees that full access that they can single handedly work. It's like the concept in the banks. If you go to banks, banks have uh, access to their strong room. My sister yeah. is a banker, so I know. And access to that strong room, the keys, you need two people to be able to access it at once. So one single person can never have access to that strong room at a time. So they usually have two separate keys, and those two people have to be present to have access to access the strong room where they get the cash from. So that's a very basic example of how you can segregate access to make sure that those two people, they have to collude and come together. <laughs> Before they can execute or defraud you, so so that's 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 just the explanation on how you can provide prevent insider trades. And then the fifth one, and which will be the last one before I start taking questions, because I think some questions are in already, is limit your employees' access on your computer. And this goes for people that give computers to their employees. So you have issued. Um, laptop device, iPad or mobile phone to, to, to your employee. You need to be able to limit the access in a way that they cannot run applications by themselves. So on Windows, you can create a user account and with that user account, you can restrict what can be done so that this account cannot install, cannot do this, cannot do that. But they can still, they will still be able to manage their work, they will still be able to execute what is expected of them without necessarily having access to the whole device or being able to do admin activities. So these are the five things I've picked out that I wanted to share. I'll do a quick summary. The first one is make sure you train your employees on phishing, social engineering, password management, uh, you know, connecting devices to unknown or general use of devices. Second one is use security solutions. They are affordable. You can use them um, at very minimal cost. Just leverage, outsource it, you just buy. You don't have to, because you're a small business, you don't have to have a security team and say, you know, that's not your core business. So you can leverage on a lot of affordable security solutions. Third one is back up your data, very key. Have one in the cloud, have one on your storage device. And then inside that thread, avoid um, one person having whole access to do stuff. Segregate your access, segregate what one person, one employee can do at a time. Make sure that their accesses are different. And in some cases, it may not be that the employee is bad. 
But imagine a very good employee that mistakenly clicks on a link, right? And unknowingly, he or she, you know, they didn't mean any harm. But the fact that she, she can execute a transaction from start to finish is a risk on, on, on her own. And, you know, so you try to limit that by having segregation of duty. Then limit employee access on your devices, on your computer, to, on your mobile devices. Make sure that that system was built in a way that they can't single-handedly do something from end to finish. So that's, that's that about that, Bumi. Okay. Thank you so much, Sherifat. Really appreciate it. Um, we have a, we have some questions there. Someone is asking me the importance of a website. I think okay. website is good for every business person must have a website, but you can the floor is yours. Yeah, so uh a website is basically as you know, the world is digital. Imagine your business in this COVID time when there's lockdown, there's everything, and you don't have online presence. Website gives you that online presence. It tells people that there's somebody here that does the services. Because a lot of people, if I want to do things now and I don't know where to go about it, like I want to buy a cake or I want to do what, I go to Google and I type uh, cake makers around me or something. And it gives me a list of people who have online presence. If you don't have a website, you don't have online presence, how will your co future customers find you? That is one of the benefits of having a website, okay? It gives you that online presence and there are people who can develop a website for you, host it for you, you know, and you can leverage on their security tools um, on the website hosting page to make sure it's secure. So basically, a website is important. If you want to engage customers online, you need to have online presence. Okay? Hey, in, addition that, that, mm -hmm. in addition to that, let's say, for example, I will talk in the in digital words words now. For example, um, no internet, no, you don't have Instagram, they all of them crash, no Facebook, everybody died. Um, what else again? TikTok, your phone too, everything, Pafuka, and it's only your Google, I mean your Gmail that is working. How do you want to contact all your customers? Because if you are, if you have a website, you're going. There's one to call email marketing. You have you 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 direct it to your email marketing so that you have all your contacts. It's only not only their phone numbers because definitely uh, sometimes the phone number doesn't work and you want to communicate to your clients. So mm -hmm. you need a website to be integrated to any email email marketing platform so that you send them. You have their details so that anything that happens. On your system or anything, you can easily send them a random messages or through your website and make sure, as you said now, our cyber security expert has said we should we should secure our website as well. So yeah. that's the important of a website. Yeah. So you don't lose your customers. I think any other questions? Let me scroll up. Someone was asking that is it only small businesses? That what about big businesses? So our uh, focus, everything I've said applies to all. But today we were speaking to small businesses. A lot of big businesses, trust me, they already have cybersecurity. If, if it's not a board level discussion, like their boards, the highest level of management, they're already discussing it. Their, their management will already be discussing it. If you are following the news, um, I think just last week, a pipeline in the U.S., they got half a, a, a company in the U.S. by ransomware. This is critical infrastructure to the U.S. They couldn't, you know, do their work because of cyber uh, a ransomware, which, which is what I explained earlier. So cybersecurity affects all, but we really wanted to give this talk on small businesses because there's this misconception that Cybersecurity, they, they only go after the big guys. No, they come after the small businesses because they believe they are soft targets, easy to reach. The big businesses, the big companies of this world already, if I, some of them have a cybersecurity team almost as big as their marketing team because they know the importance of cybersecurity. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? I think those are. I'm trying to search if we have other questions. 
Okay. I think those are the two questions we have. Okay, great. Any other question before we end the section? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So, we, so I, can, I can do a quick recap. Maybe some okay. people joined in late. Um, okay. So today we're, we're talking about cybersecurity and cybersecurity is being secured online, making sure your data, information, assets, system are secured. And why do we do that? Because there are some bad guys called hackers or cyber criminals who want to take advantage of your information and have access to your money. I explained that most of the cyber criminals in Nigeria or cyber attacks in Nigeria, their main aim is to go after the money. So you hardly find a hacker in Nigeria that is just doing it because you want to make a point or they are going after the money. You want to take your money, your hard-earned money from your business in a way. And then we described different ways in which this can be done. We talked about phishing, uh, where they send links to you and try to get information from you, or smishing, where they send you an SMS and or call you vision and say, give us your, your token. We sent the token to your phone now. Trust me, they need that token so that they can access it. And this is very common. It's common in Nigeria. Have, very common in Nigeria. You get a call and then the person says, oh, you are... The one I recently saw was, uh, they said they created... Uh, MTN or so, I can't remember, one company, and they said we, they pretended to be MTN, that uh, you have just won something, you have just done something, Go oh, yeah, we sent the, the code to your phone for you to have access to that thing, send us back the code. There's a general rule, there's nothing free in free land. Even free is not free there. If somebody calls you and says, you didn't work for this thing, you didn't apply, you didn't say, uh, we didn't partake in a, an exercise that will make you to win something. Tell me how you will win it. But you know, most people that fall for cyber, uh, all these tricks, fishing, yeah, check yourself very well. You see, you want to go and get something that you didn't work for. Because how will somebody call me and say, um, you have won something, give us a code. When I didn't apply for anything, well, how will I win something? So, you know, you just discuss such information. But that people that fall for it, yeah. That reminds me. I just I remember even in this Canada, there has come to <clears throat> it's a not lot. in Nigeria. I yes, remember so, I'm focusing on Nigeria because <laughs> uh, you know we target Nigeria. in Canada. Yeah. I want to tell you my personal experience. <laughs> somebody somebody messaged me like I think last month. I just remembered now as we we're having this live chat, and person was chatting with me. How do you get my number? I don't know. <clears throat> maybe the person went to search me on Instagram or maybe my LinkedIn. I just don't know. And the person they sent me... They can just guess numbers. And, and, the, person, and the person sent me, you want, um, a, you want iPad, um, iPhone, is it iPhone 12 or something, something, something? No, it's a Samsung complaint that I, I want something, something in Samsung. I said Samsung. That this is strange. I was chatting with the person. I said, if Samsung, if I if Samsung, if I win something from Samsung, Samsung will not send me a WhatsApp message. It's Samsung is going exactly. to call me. I said, it's so exactly. I was I was actually playing with it. I was actually playing with the person and the person was got angry and said, This is how people miss their opportunity. I said, immediately Thank I just you. Lock the number. I said exactly. he paid the person there. I think the person is in there. He paid the yeah. person there. I think <laughs> I had to, I had to show yeah. the messages to my husband because it was I said, look at these people. I know that there are a lot of scams in Canada. So yeah. you don't need to care. Yeah. They go after your CRE details. So a yeah. lot of the ones that are common in Canada. Uh, if you had engaged, so sometimes when I'm less busy, I engage them for that. You know, I'll just give them fake uh, information. They'll try it and say, oh, mm. it's not working. It's not working. I say, get the fuck off. <laughs> 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 it, won't it won't work now because I'm giving you fake information. So clearly what I'm trying to say is that there's nothing free. In that case, yeah. you didn't enter into any com competition with Samsung. Probably you don't even use Samsung. 
They're mm-hmm. just trying to get you to lure you to yeah. get information from you. Thankfully, you didn't say, uh, you know, you didn't let the greedy part to say, oh, let me try and see what I want. Uh, no. There's nothing free. There's nothing free. So having that mindset will always protect you. You know, I believe so much in working before you reward yourself. If it's too good to be true, just be careful. It's likely not good at all. And if you also observe the messaging of that person, you see that they won't be coherent. There will be mistakes in their grammar. It's mm-hmm. not going to be professional. Imagine him telling you that uh, this is how people miss their luck. Samsung will not. I said Samsung will not way. talk to me like exactly. that. Like that. So these are tell signs that you can watch out for. This email that I got, the grammar is it grammatically correct? But with the structure, does what whatever the person is saying, does it click? You know, it's like uh, one phishing email we saw recently. Persons pretended to be from HR, but the mail was saying they should transfer money. So I can HR, can you sign up the email as HR and say they should transfer money? It doesn't oh, yeah, jive. No, so not all of this, exactly. It doesn't add up. You know, so these are the things to watch out for. Educate your employees. You yourself get educated. No, no, what is different? What what can fly? What 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 makes sense? Sometimes it's just common sense. You need to be able to prevent yourself from losing your money. We talked about passwords as, as well. Make sure you don't use simple passwords. How can your password to your social media account be your name or your child's name or your favorite place? Something that somebody that looks at your social media accounts very well can easily guess what it is. If they if you put your name or your middle name, they can easily get it. And then your birthday is there. Some people don't know how to hide their birth date on their social media. They see your year. It's just for me to put your name and your year behind. That's some people's password. So you know, make sure your password is complex. We talk about using phrases instead of just password. An example of a phrase is summer is my favorite season. That is about four words. If you look at the number of characters, it's almost 15 or 12 or 20 characters. That is very hard to guess. Somebody can know, is even using some tools, they can't easily get that kind of password. You know, so we talked about also managing your devices. Don't encourage yourself, don't go to any place and start connecting to any network. Just plug on to any network because it's free or go to a cyber cafe and start using without using VPN. And then on that platform, you are logging onto your banking application, doing sensitive transactions. You're only opening stuff for, for, for hackers. Uh, we talked about using security solutions. There are many security solutions. If you host your website, you can go back to the company and then look for security. Make sure your website is HTTPS. If I yeah. want to use a website, a, an e-commerce site, I will run away the fact that I don't see the padlock sign because it means that whatever I type into that password, if I put my credit card number there, it's going to be plain text that they are going to process it and transmit it. Can you repeat that again, please? Okay, websites, like for Mm -hmm. people that have e-commerce sites, so you have your website, and on that e-commerce site, on on that website, people can actually transact. People can go there and buy stuff, put their card number there. Mm -hmm. The first thing to check is, does it have a padlock sign? the HTCPS, that padlock sign signifies that whatever thing you are typing in that website is encrypted. It means that they have converted the plain text. In this case, maybe my card number is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They will convert that card number to something else using some encryption technology algorithm behind. And that will do that. Oh, so you need a security person to do that. It's not something you can do, but you can leverage on security solutions. So if you host your website, for instance, on GoDaddy, you can go there and buy their SSL encryption, their encryption suite, and that will make your website. Uh, uh, okay, encrypted. I think I know what you're talking about. You're talking about SSL, SSL. Yeah, yeah okay. Sorry, my son decided to turn off the lights. You can just imagine. He was working fast and turned off the lights. <laughs> For a second, people will think, oh, is she in Nigeria? They've taken the light. No, he decided to do that. Anyways, uh, so SSL encryption, that, that's what I mean. So it secures your, yeah. your website. I have it on my website. Good. So this is an example of some of the security solutions you can 
put into your business to make sure you're you are transacting securely. Back up your data. We spoke about that. Make sure your data is backed up. You have one copy somewhere and another copy elsewhere. You can't put the two copies of your data in the same place, which is why I suggested one in the cloud and one in your physical hard drive that you have. Okay. And the fourth one is insider threats. We talked about segregating access or control of what your employees do, such that one single person cannot complete a transaction end to end. Which, and when I mean transaction, that what the, I, I use the example of strong room in the bank, where there are drawer keys. Two people have keys, so. Those two people have to come together before they can assess the, the, the strong ground and get the money out. Then the, the last but not the least is limit your employee access on your computer or your mobile device such that they can't install programs by themselves. They need admin accounts to do that. And you can be the owner of the admin account have, that has a separate password to it such that they don't mistakenly download something or do an activity that can compromise your system. So that's that's it in a nutshell, yeah. quick summary. Thank you, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. So my pleasure. this kindly, can you give a, can you give me your okay? I think I know it, your IG number so that they can call anyone that wants to. Okay, uh, my Instagram account is Sherry Raman S H E. Yeah, okay, great. And on I'm LinkedIn, I'm Sherry Fata Kiori. Did I get it? No. Nope. Sherry Rama, let me let me send it to you. Okay, okay. Mm. Okay. So you can, we can follow her on Instagram, so we can get more tips on cyber security. Then you can also follow her on her LinkedIn. A LinkedIn mm -hmm. is Sherifat Akimomi. You know, yeah. so I really want to appreciate you for coming on board, and I really it's learned a pleasure. lot. I really learned a lot this morning. So it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's what I love to do. It's what I love to talk about. So you know, it's uh, feel free. Please ask me questions. Uh, if you're a small business, what can you do to improve your cyber security? I'll be happy to to, to support you. I'll be, I'll be happy to help you uh, and make sure you're doing things. Because together, we have to work together to keep the bad guys out. Yeah. You know? Or imagine somebody, and, and this is an example that I used to give to people. If Imagine that you have an aged mother that is sick and in the middle of the night had an attack and then you have your ATM and you need money urgently to take out of the hospital, you go to the ATM and you get there, your money is gone. Because one cyber criminal on Aka somewhere are throwing you a phishing email and taking your money. And maybe that money is all you have to save your mother. Imagine the impact. This is what I used to explain to people on cyber Security is beyond just doing it. It's personal. It's because they are depriving people of their hard-earned money. And there's no reason why that should be celebrated. And this is why I, I take it very seriously and I'm quite passionate about it. Thank you so much. And please, before we leave, can if you've not given us a thumbs up, kindly give us a thumbs up by liking this video 
and kindly share to people your loved ones and you can always rewatch you can always replay to watch it again so thank you do have a lovely thank day you. bye bye it's my thank pleasure you. Friend, bye. Omotayo. thank you for coming on board and thank you for this super chat really appreciate you so bye bye